Over the years, we've seen some pretty incredible properties host haunted houses at Halloween Horror Nights. From iconic slashers to cult classics to IP that goes outside the bounds of traditional horror media, your favorite spooky franchise or property has probably been featured at the event at one point or another. However, there have been a few times when plans don't exactly make it to the event proper, sometimes not even leaving the conceptual stage before being canned. So let's dive into some of the different IP houses over the years that were either unbuilt or unfinished for Halloween Horror Nights. For our first entry, we must travel back to 2007 for HHN 17. While that year had its own unrealized concept with the story of Nathaniel Crow that I've talked about in videos in the past, this year really marked the introduction of third-party IP into the event with the inclusion of Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, and Leatherface as primary characters for that year. So during the following year, Universal was looking for other classic horror properties to incorporate at the event, with one of them being John Carpenter's The Fog. The concept would be that the Jaws and surrounding Amity area would be transformed into Antonio Bay, with the undead sailors from the movie coming to life amongst, you know, all the fog. And while this is all we really know about the concept, we do know it was developed on paper, but due to a multitude of different reasons, possibly including the uneasy economic state of the world around this time, as well as general licensing and creative decisions, this idea was canned. However, the concept of zombie sailors lurking through a very foggy atmosphere would be realized through the original Deadman's Wharf Scare Zone at HHN 26 and Deadman's Peter Winter's Wake House at HHN 31, with both of these additions being fan favorites of the years that they appeared in. So at least there's some sort of consolation for the lack of an IP, although I'd be curious to see their true translation of the source material and how it would work in a park without Jaws and Amity Island. Now when it comes to blockbuster horror franchises, many of them have made their way to Halloween Horror Nights numerous times. But there is one that has never received an official IP house treatment despite it being one of the most beloved horror franchises of all time even though it did come quite close. I'm of course talking about Scream, and the unbuilt house for that property meant to be at HHN 25. Originally planned to be in Sprung Tent 1, this house was meant to focus on iconic scenes from the original 1996 film. And development supposedly got pretty far along, as indicated by this leaked advertisement featuring the Scream logo and unreleased commercial featuring Ghostface. Supposedly the conflict came with MTV, who at that point were producing an all new remake of the series that had some pretty clear differences from the original film that the house was based on. One of these differences that MTV wanted to incorporate into the house was the change of Ghostface's infamous mask, which had a less stylized design within the show. And so, because of creative differences, the allegedly almost complete Scream House had to be quickly converted to something else before the event began. Needing something familiar that could fit well into a lot of the sets that were already built, they chose The Purge, which was a scare zone the year prior. This is probably the most well-known example in this video, as many fans wish that they went with that original Scream House they were planning. But I'm honestly glad Universal didn't give in to the changes that were necessary and make a house based on the remake considering the success and longevity of that project compared to the original 1996 classic. Will Scream ever make it to Halloween Horror Nights? I'm not sure, but the story of Scream at HHN 25 being so close yet so far is really, really interesting to me. Okay, so it doesn't take a genius to say that 2020 was one of the weirdest times ever to be a theme park fan, specifically in the case of Halloween Horror Nights. This would be the 30th anniversary of the event as a whole, and there were plans to celebrate it with a bang, including many houses that paid tribute to the event's history and legacy. However, one of those houses was based on a more unconventional property, or should I say, artist, Billie Eilish. Yes, for those who may not know, Billie Eilish was meant to be amongst Jack and the other icons at HHN 30, in a house based on her breakout album, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? With music and visuals that definitely create a creepy atmosphere, it was suggested that Universal would use this vibe to center the house's theming and scares. And as evidenced by prop photos leaking online, it seemed like construction for this house was already underway within Soundstage 40, otherwise known as the Shrek 40 Theater. However, we all know what happened that year. Halloween Hornets was shut down and the 30th anniversary year was moved to 2021, hosting pretty much all of the speculated houses for 2020. All except for Billie Eilish, with the Shrek theater house becoming Case Files Unearthed, Legendary Truth. 
While not much is known about this house, I'm sure Billy's rebrand from a darker, more sinister style to a much more pop-friendly one was likely the reason she didn't wish to continue with Universal. Or quite possibly, Universal wished to pull the plug in order to greater tie the 30th anniversary of Halloween Horror Nights together. Either way, it seemed like Universal kept a similar music-based thought process when seeking out the weekend for After Hours Nightmare at HHN 31. And judging from the popularity of that house and this unbuilt Billie Eilish one, music could very likely be an angle Universal wishes to dive into a bit more in the coming years. Now, if you thought the days of Scream getting switched around at the last minute were far and away, there's another key example of a similar situation just last year when it comes to the 10th haunted house at HHN 31, a house originally planned to be themed around the Evil Dead. Now, Universal is no stranger to this property, as both the 2013 Evil Dead remake and Ash vs. the Evil Dead have both received houses at HHN in the past. And with Evil Dead Rise set to release in 2022, it was very likely that we were going to see this take on the franchise reflected in a haunted house. It was very heavily rumored for both Orlando and Hollywood for a good chunk of the months leading up to the event, but suddenly at a point, it was just no longer seen or talked about. And that's nothing super serious. Things change all the time when it comes to Horror Nights, and those are just rumors. But it was clear that this house was quite far along in development, and that could be seen through the surprise original replacements on both coasts. See, instead of throwing another IP in there like they did with The Purge and Scream, Universal went with original offerings likely because of the short time frame. Universal Studios Hollywood got Universal Horror Hotel, a house that had sets suspiciously similar to the high-rise featured in Evil Dead Rise. Specifically, certain set pieces seemed to be directly repurposed, such as the bathtub scene, for example. And as far as Orlando is concerned, we would get Hellblock Horror in Soundstage 23, which wasn't as directly connected to Evil Dead Rise's Horror Hotel, but featured a layout that makes sense when considering that movie and its setting. And across the board, Hellblock horror was considered to be a very haphazard house, being excluded from event merchandise such as t-shirts and posters not including the logo when that's really not the case for original houses. And I think that indicates that this house was definitely something else, Evil Dead specifically. Whether it was a conflict with Warner Brothers or the fact that the movie had a delayed release, the story of the unbuilt Evil Dead Rise House spread quickly through the fandom and I'm sure what we know now isn't the end of it. I'm just personally curious if we'll ever see this IP truly return again, as it would make for a very solid house when considering modern HHN standards. As you can see, when it comes to these unbuilt haunted houses, they really represent the ever-changing nature of any given Halloween Horror Nights year. While I personally would have been interested in these ideas, they could have gone either way, becoming HHN classics as far as IP is concerned, or not really being a solid fit for the event at the time they debuted. Something like The Fog might be better now than it would have been back in 2008. And the same can be said about something like Scream, even though that seems like that would have been a really solid choice. Would I like to see these IPs return to Halloween Horror Nights? Of course I would. But for now, we must wonder what these houses looked like and whether we even know the truth. But let me know which of these houses is most interesting to you and which one you would want to visit the most. And if you like HHN and general theme park updates, history, deep dives, and things of that nature, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. I want to thank you all for watching, and of course, I will see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.